All right, here's a really quick video on how to use intermediate value theorem. In the last video, I told you what intermediate value theorem was, and if you are not sure what it is, please go back and watch that. It's a really short video to give you an idea. This is how it's actually used. I will start with the definition of, of intermediate value theorem. An intermediate value theorem suggests that if we have a function f that's polynomial, and that f of a is not the same height as f of b, and a is less than b, then f of x takes on every value between f of a and f of b in the closed interval a, b. Holy macaroni. It's a terrible mess, um, but it's a really easy concept. Let me just show it to you super, super quick. Here is a, my x value a. Here's my x value b over here. So this is a, this is b. Well, a is less than b, and the heights can't be the same, so the height b will be over here, I guess, right? And it's a polynomial function, so all it's saying is that it's connected, right? That it's, there's no breaks in it. And all it's saying is that whatever height this is, whatever height this is right here, and whatever height is the height is here, that we know at minimum that our function will pass through all the heights. So if this is a height of 5 and this is a height of 12, it will pass through all numbers greater than 5 and less than 12. It may pass through more. It may but we know these numbers will definitely be included. That is to say, this function could dip way down here, and it could include numbers that we're not anticipating. But we know for sure that every number between 5 and 12 will have to be there, because think about this. If you started at a height of 5 and you went to a height of 12 without raising your pencil, isn't it true that you would have had to pass through every height greater than 5 but less than 12? And I think that's obvious. It amazes me sometimes that somebody got famous with this. But anyway, this is how you'd use that. We're asked to prove that there are zeros here, right? Well, look. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take f of 3. All right? I'll take f of 3, so that's 3 cubed minus 4 times 3 squared plus 3 times 3 minus 2. So we have 27. Oops, sorry. And remember, we're, we can't multiply these two first. We have, to we have to do our exponents first, so this is... 3 squared is 9, so minus 36, right? Plus 9, minus 2. So let's see what we have here. We have, right, if we add this and this, we get 36. So 36 minus 36 minus 2 is equal to negative 2. So f of 3 equals negative 2, doesn't it? I think that that's probably obvious. Right? So we have f of 3 is equal to negative 2. And remember that negative 2, this sounds so stupid, but it's less than 0, right? When we do, when we take f of 4, and I'm not going to do all this math for you, but when we do f of 4, f of 4 is actually equal to 10, and 10 is greater than 0. Right? That is to say, this is negative. We went from a negative number to a positive number. Well, if we went from a negative number to a positive number, we must have crossed through what number? 0. And that is the point that we're trying to make that we covered all numbers between, so we covered all heights from negative 2 through 10, right? Namely, 0 is the number that we cared about, isn't it? So that's good proof. And oftentimes, that's how intermediate value theorem is used. I hope this video has been really helpful for you. Uh, as I look at this, I'm about to do another video right this second. It's going to take two minutes on how to make sure your calculator doesn't miscalculate. I had a student come in today and said, um, Mr. Lindelof, my calculator thinks that negative 2 squared is equal to negative 4. What's wrong with me? What's wrong with my calculator? I I'd love to talk to you about that. So hopefully if you finish this video, you go on to watch the next one. Um, if you haven't already subscribed, please do. And I'd love to hear your comments. I really do. Thanks.